Hey everyone, today I'm taking a closer look at the Akai MPK Mini Play Mark III. Now this is a keyboard very similar to other keyboards in the Akai MPK series, but there is one major difference with the Play series, however, and that's this feature right here, the inbuilt speaker and the inbuilt sounds. A very common question from people that are starting out making music is, can the MIDI keyboards make sound on their own? In most cases, they can't, and you need a computer and software and virtual instruments in order to make sounds. And this keyboard is one of the few keyboards that actually have inbuilt sounds. So in this video, let's take a closer look at this keyboard, see what it can do, what the internal sounds sound like, and who this keyboard is primarily for. Okay, so first, let's take a little overlook. So this is a very standard MIDI keyboard layout. It has two octaves, has eight drum pads, and four assignable knobs. So this is the main difference between the Mini Play and just the APK Mini Mark III MIDI only version, which has eight knobs. Here you have a selector knob for different sounds, and you can see them changing in the display there. And then you have a volume button. In addition, you have an arpeggiator, octave up and down, full level for the drums, so that instead of having velocity sensitive drums, you can have just a full level. And also a note repeat that can be used for both the drums and the keys. When the keyboard is being used in standalone mode with its own internal sounds, these knobs are used to change the parameters of the sounds. So you can see here this has a filter, resonance, reverb, and chorus. And if you press this button right here, knobs A and B, it changes to the secondary settings, which are attack, release, EQ low, and EQ high. Like all Akai MPK keyboards, it also has this expression and pitch joystick right here. So it has an X and a Y axis, which I know many people dislike and it makes it a little harder than just having two different dials but but this is the joystick that all the keyboards in the mini mpk series come with on the back of the keyboard you have a port for a sustain pedal headphone outputs a usb port for using it as a midi keyboard with your computer and a power switch so switching from usb powered or battery powered if you're using this keyboard with a computer, you will have it on USB and it will automatically power up. But if you use it standalone, like we're doing right now, you need it to put it on battery and then it will power up. It also has a battery compartment right here for four AA batteries. So when it comes to the internal sounds, the first impression is a little bit like one of those old Casio keyboards from the 80s and 90s. All the sounds here are synthesized, so there are no samples. And it does have a little bit of a toy keyboard feel. But some of them are okay. Now this keyboard also has an internal speaker right here, which uh, is actually not too bad. It's still a little tinny, but it's way better than the previous generation. So if I take my sound recorder closer to it, so you can hear it doesn't sound great, but it sounds okay. Okay, now let's connect this keyboard to my recorder using an aux cable. Having the keyboard connected through the headphone jack gives a much richer sound. So let's quickly browse through the different sounds and see what we have. Several piano settings. some percussive melodic sounds. Draw bar organ. A 
that sounds very 8-bit. Now these keyboards never get uh, guitar sounds right. So this is supposed to be a nylon guitar. Hardly sounds very good. Steel string guitar. Jazz electric guitar. Electric guitar. Muted electric guitar, overdrive. Acoustic bass, finger bass, to the strings. So the first one out is a violin. Obviously it doesn't sound great. Doesn't sound too bad. Doesn't sound like strings, but it can be used for something. Choir. Orchestra hits. Sounds very 80s. Trumpets, trombone. Tuba, muted trumpet. Sounded just like Miles Davis. French horn.
kind of have to play that one for the ocarina. Okay, now we get to the synth section, and these sounds are probably the most useful for people, and even for beginners, it might actually be a good way to learn a little bit about how you synthesize your own sounds using these encoders here. So here's the lead number one, which is a square wave. Increase the attack time. Sounds very eighties too. some 80s elevator music using that sound. Now we get to the effect sounds, and there's a lot of weird ones here. This one is okay, then you have... This sounds more like a marimba rather than a kalimba, but... You can make some ambient sounds here at the very end. And then we're back. So that was all the sounds in the key section. And then you also have a sound bank for the drums. So you have a standard set. The drum sounds actually sound pretty nice. 
Okay, so that was all the sounds in the sound bank. Now let's look at how we can manipulate sounds. So if we go to one of the synth sounds, say one of the leads. So this one sounds pretty bare. And then we can start manipulating it using these encoders right here. We can use the filter. The resonance. The reverb. Chorus. We can change the attack time. release time the EQ and then you can actually shape your sounds in a pretty good way the synth sounds will probably be the most useful for most people. When you've changed a sound, you can also save it to favorites. And you do this by holding down these two at the same time, and then select a pad. Then you'll have it there. Okay, so when will this be useful? Well, in most cases, you will probably use your MIDI keyboard with your computer or your tablet or some sort of software However, if you're just starting out, it might be nice to have something that you can just immediately grab and start playing. And also if you're just fooling around trying to figure out some chords or something, it could be nice to just have something you can easily just grab, turn on and start playing. But aside from that, I don't think the sounds are good enough for live use or for jamming sessions. Maybe you can use the drums, but I can't foresee that that will be an extremely popular use, but I might be wrong. And another thing is that the size is really nice and it can be a great travel companion to just bring in an airplane or a bus and connect some headphones and start playing and try to figure something out. It's probably a good idea machine. Of course, also, if you have a looper pedal or a looper app, you can do some fun stuff with that too. So on that note, let's try to connect this to a looper app and see if we can make something fun out of it. Okay, so here I have connected the keyboard to the iRig Pro, which is an audio interface especially made for iPads and phones. And I have my Loopy app open here. So now I'm going to try to make a little looping cover of As It Was by Harry Styles. Okay, so that's my little cover of As It Was by Harry Styles. So as you can tell, it doesn't sound completely professional, but it sounds close enough. And it's kind of fun playing around with a looper and just some random sounds. So that concludes my little overview of this little keyboard, the MPK Mini Play. You know, it's a great MIDI keyboard and, and it's a really nice feature having those extra sounds. And although the sounds aren't the best sounds in the world, I do think you can find good use for it. And if you're a beginner, this is probably a great start because it has all the features of a regular MIDI keyboard, but you can also just play around with sounds and figure things out without having to be attached to your computer and your DAW. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing. 
and I will see you in the next video. And in the meantime, you can check out this video right here where I'm comparing pads and keys to figure out what's the best MIDI keyboard for you.